वारी शाम बनवारी
भागवतम प्रथम स्कंध प्रथम अध्याय आई हैव टोल द एसेंस ऑफ फर्स्ट श्लोक ऑफ मंगलाचरण ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम आई टोल फाइव डिफरेंट मीनिंग्स ऑफ दिस श्लोक इन फाइव वेज now second day slow uh, the essence of second day slow and third and we will be done dharma prajyate kaito atra parmo nirmasaranam satam vedyam vastvam atra vastu shivadam tap trayon mulganam shrimad bhagavate mahamuni krite kimba parai rishvara hrde avaruddate atra krutvi sushvi tatkana दो श्रीमद भागवत महामुनि श्री अभ्यास देव हैज रिटन सो मेनी पुराण्स इवन महाभारत इन दैट गीता गीतोपनिषद ही हैज डिवाइडेड वेदास इन टू फोर ही हैज कंपाइल्ड ब्रह्मसूत्र वेरी हाई क्लास ऑफ थिंग्स but he was not satisfied and when naradrishi came and he suggested to be in trance totally surrendering to krishna and then in trance you will have something that you will be satisfied otherwise no and he trance he had shrimad bhagavatam and then he wrote so धर्म प्रज्ञत कैतव अत्र इन श्रीमद भागवते इन दिस श्रीमद भागवतम हिज द लास्ट बुक ऑफ श्रीमद श्री अभ्यास इन ऑल अदर बुक्स लाइक ऑल पुराण्स इन महाभारत 
like in Brahma Sutra. He had told so many things, but not three pastimes of Krishna. Very powerful, very sweet. In this, there is nothing mixture. In all Puran, there is something mixture that in Golok Vrindavan, Srimati Radhika became angry and he gave some curse to Siddham. And then Siddham also cursed him, her, and they came to this world. It cannot be. It is impossible. So these are some things that in Golok Vrindavan they are quarreling, and they have anger and lust and all so many things. Only to make realize of general people, not so much high, um, near about them, their intelligence. He gave all these things. But he told so many things that, uh, that are not true. Not true. Well, he had told for beginners. As Swamiji has told something for beginners, something and for the uh, the advanced devotees, he had told something else. So we should try to reconcile all these things. So, dharma kajya prajyati kaito atra. Like for Harishandra, like Dhruva, like also Prahalad, like Chitraketu Maharaj. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, he had told something but not clearly. But in Srimad Bhagavatam, he had clearly told. What can lead us to Golok Vrindavan? Never he, in Srimad Bhagavatam, he is not cheating us by anything, directly. He told in Srimad Bhagavatam, Guru na sasyat, swajanu na sasyat. Patir na sasya, daivang na tatsya, jamu ja etya samu peta mrittum. A guru is not really guru. You should reject that guru. He cannot give love and affection for Krishna. You should reject him. A husband is not husband if he is not helping her wife for Krishna consciousness, really. Hmm? We should reject. A guru, if he thinks that all these disciples are, are my property, I will test all these properties, like properties. They have no connection with Krishna only, oh, connection with me. Then that guru is a reset guru, not guru. At once, reject. Like ba um, Bali Maharaj rejected his Guru. There are so many examples for this. If a wife is not helping his husband in Krishna consciousness, at once she should be rejected. If a son is not helpful and not helping his father in Krishna consciousness, then he should be rejected, like Shan, no Shan, no relation. So, in the ground of all the relations, what is there? If they are helping in Krishna consciousness, then they are guru, husband, wife, daughter, son, father, friend, like this. Otherwise, you should be rejected. And if you are considering something, then you are deprived of Krishna. So in Srimad Bhagavatam, it has been told all clearly. Gopis <coughs> left their all husbands, and they are superior most in whole world. So Srimad Bhagavatam telling that 
all these things. We are never deprived of, of not anything to cheat us. Nirmat saranang satang. What has been told in Srimad Bhagavatam? Nirmat saranang satang. Those who are out of envy or duplicity, hypocrisy and all those things. Never. Vastam, hmm? vedyam vastam vastu. Who is vastam vastu? Krishna is himself. Atve jnan paratattva. Anything is not free from Krishna, some relation with Krishna. Anyone is not dependent, only Krishna is dependent. But sometimes he is also not dependent, independent. Sometimes he becomes independent of whom? Of Gopi, Prajavasi, especially to Radhika. So, <coughs> Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Parishwara. Nothing to read anything. Only hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. At once Krishna will be controlled. He will come. He is bound to come. <coughs> Devote his heart. If if there is what? If you have honor for Harikatha. If you are hearing with honor with a strong faith that what is written in Srimad Bhagavata is true to extent. Only these things should be there. And one thing, another also, not offending Srimad Bhagavatam, not offending Bhagavat, two kinds of Bhagavatam, Bhakta Bhagavata and Nevar. Then if you are only hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, with honor, at once Krishna will come and will be controlled in heart. At once he is telling. What is the meaning of at once? <coughs> quickly. Quickly, quickly. At once. Don't disbelieve. Sukadeva Goswami. Ashuta Goswami. Our best day of himself. Don't disbelieve. How it will be? Krishna knows. Quickly, at once, he will come in our heart and, and he will never go <coughs> anywhere. So eat, you should sit, eat with strong belief and a strong honor. By hearing, we will follow in our heart in our activities, and Krishna must come. He is bound to come. Nigama kalpataro galitang phalam shukamukha damridrava sanjitam pivata bhagavatam rasamalayam muraho rasika bhubhava. Nigama kalpataro. Ved, Upanishad, all the sutil. Mahabharat, Ramayana. All are like it. <coughs> Kalpataru. Desire tree. Transcendental desire tree. Hmm. And Srimad Bhagavatam? A sweet fruit of all. Hmm. If you are choosing, choosing, sucking the root of the tree, or sweetness will not come. If you are sucking the leaves of tree, the branches of tree, sweetness cannot come. Even you are sucking uh, raw fruits, green, even it will. When it is pure, matured, and has right and whole and some cooks, cook birds, cuckoo birds, or parrots have come attracted with that fragrance. And if we have given some, and then it will be so tasteful. 
So, all the Vedas, Upanishads are, are like tree. You can suck them, but no sweetness. Even Ramayana Mahabharata, no so sweetness. Even all Purans are the same thing, no sweetness. Even you are reading Srimad Bhagavatam yourself, no sweetness will come. Why? Parrots are sukshari or cuckoo bird has not touched. Hmm? When there is something in their mouth that shows, speaks something, and when they will get that in the throat, oh, it was very tasteful, very tasteful. And that is why it has been told, Ja Bhagavata Pada. I know that so many men devotees reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Sankrachari also read this. Do you know? All the um, renounced order sannyasi of Sankrachari, they read Mayabadi, they read Srimad Bhagavatam. Without their business cannot go out. So they read Bhagavatam. And they know more than us, very, very learned. They can do meaning of one word, oh, hundreds of times, like Sarvam Bhattacharya. But they don't follow Srimad Bhagavatam. Why? Because they don't hear from any realized Vaishnava, Rasik and Bhavak. So it has come from Krishna in Guru Parampara. Guru Parampara. Sukhdev Goswami, who is Sukhdev Goswami? He is the parrot of Srimati Radhika. You have, I have told so many times. And he has seen all the pastimes of, and tested the pastimes of Krishna with his own eyes, with his own senses, with all his intelligence, everything. So anyone who has not read Srimad Bhagavatam from such a high class of Rasik and Bhagavatam, Bhagavata, in the line, this line, he cannot explain Srimad Bhagavatam really. We are explaining anyhow in that line, but not that thing will come. That nectar will not come. So if anyone has not come in this process and he has not read Srimad Bhagavatam in this disciplic line and he has not become a Rashik and Bhav, oh, he cannot touch Srimad Bhagavatam, he cannot explain, though he can utter words, no how, and some explanations in give. But the fruit will be not like as Sukadeva Goswami did to Parikshit Maharaj or others. They cannot do. But if anyone like Sukadeva Goswami, they have read Srimad Bhagavatam with Gurudev. And they are Rashik and Bhagavat. But they can cannot explain it. Why? When we will come to explain anything, they will remember Krishna pastimes and at once they will be infant. They will be like, but unconsciousness, they cannot. If Krishna will come and he will try to explain it, or he will be the first person that he will be infant. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, never, he could not explain himself. He wanted to hear from sometimes to, from Garadha, you know. He cannot tell. And if Radhika, uh, even first word, Janma, Dasya, Ja, if he will see, will hear, what will be? He will remember Krishna. And at once he will be. She cannot do Gadadhar Pandit also always weeping, weeping. But there was something. But if Radha and Krishna has done some special mercy, like they did in Tursukh Goswami, 
that you should remain in this world. We are going. And you should be for some time in this world. And a special mercy we are giving to you that you can explain Srimad Bhagavan to all. You will not be faint. That may be chance. That a chance will come then when you will remain, remember me or Radhika in Brahmar Gita or anywhere. Or in Ras, you will may remember. But try to pass away that subject. Don't utter the name of Radhika and me in these cases. And try to subside. And a special mercy will come from us that you can uh, explain Srimad Bhagavad. Otherwise it is very difficult. Very difficult. If he is not Rashik, who oh, can explain Srimad Bhagavad? Because Srimad Bhagavad is Rasa himself. Brajandranandan is himself a Rasaswaru. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like himself, or So it is very hard. We can explain some semblance. Semblance? Abhat? Like Abhat. And you can imagine that if in semblance something is like this, then when some Rasik and Bhav Bhakts, like Radhar Pandit, like Raghunath Bhatta, like Rupa Goswami and others, Sanatana Goswami, they are explaining Srimad Bhagavatam in such a way. Uh, if you have read Srimad Brihad Bhagavatam, you can imagine something. Otherwise, you cannot imagine. For this is like a treasure. Very high class of treasure, transcendental treasure. More than what Chintamani. What? No. Desire stone. Desire stone. More than that. Anyone cannot compare. Those who are comparing like this, oh, they are foolish persons. He cannot compare. Srimad Bhagavatam from these things. Those who have no taste in Srimad Bhagavatam like this, Sukhde Goswami has told for them. Tenth canto, first. Nivatta tarsai upagiyamanat bau sadhat sotri mano viramat ka uttam slok gunanu badat bred jet bina pasukna. Those who are oh, thinking only problems, only problems for this worldly thing. And they are giving up Srimad Bhagavatam here. From any devotee who has left this world, no worldly, any desires. And he is the line of, in the line of Sukhde Goswami, in the line of Prabhupada and others. If he is not desiring to hear all these things, for any worldly problem, or oh, he is like, what? Butcher. More than butcher. So we should try to know all this. These are only the Mahaushadhi of this world. Mahaushadhi? Eh? Medicine. 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 Of It will not go in vain if you are hearing, anyhow. If you desire or not, but you are hearing with Shraddha. Then, this is medicine also, and also very sweet, like nectar. Diet and medicine both. So, <coughs> um, those who are not hearing, they are like butchers. Or oh, killing themselves, not butchers, but other animals. Both. Killing other animals also, and himself. That kind of thing. And for whole future is blocked. Also, the neham addam, nideham addam, fulaham su kalpam, mayanu kulle navasvate ritam puman bhavabdim natarisa atmaha. Again, it has been done. So many times. Worldly sacrifice. But even we worldly persons, like Bhusha, cutting ourselves, 
oh, it is very good to cut, but to not to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, so it not be. So, Nigama Kalpata Rurgalitam Phalam Sukha Mukhaat Amrit Drasan Jitam. He brought it from Golok Vandavan. He was the special parrot of Srimati Radhika. That is, is no so many more things. If he was a parrot of Krishna, oh, he could not, uh, his, uh, who would not have known the heart of Srimati Radhika. How Srimati Radhika is feeling happiness in the meeting of Krishna? Always parrot she is with her and she knows everything. What has been And Radhaya Pranay Mahima, he knows how Krishna beautiful in four qualities, how sweet. Oh, he knows because he is the uh, servant of Srimati Radhika, he knows. And what happiness he, Srimati Radhika, uh, tastes. Also, he knows that parrot. Not like Krishna, that Krishna wants to. Uh, and that is why he had to uh, stole away the heart of Radhika. But this parrot had nothing to stole because he is always serving Srimati Radhika. He knows everything. He is a Rashi. He is a Bhav. So he knows better than what Krishna knows. That is why Krishna deputed him to be in this world and to manifest this Srimad Bhagavatam. So, you should try to hear this Srimad Bhagavatam with great care, with great honor and a strong belief. Oh, I will have nothing to do for my... Uh, uh, no, no. My... Uh, going from this world. <laughs> for mukti, salvation, and for that bhakti, everything will come automatic by hearing. Krishna has promised that in the form of Harikatha I go in the heart, enter in the heart of devotees. So this is very powerful. And then I manage everything. You should not be uh, worried for this. So, he had told that, oh, for whole life you should see here, Srimad He had not told that you should read. Hmm? Anywhere he has told that you should go and read Srimad Bhagavatam. Never. <laughs> By reading it will not come. So we should hear. Also for Harinam, same thing. First you should hear Shravanam, then Kirtanam, then other things. In Srimad Bhagavat also it has been told. Oh, first Harikatha, listen Harikatha. And then you should be matured to tell Harikatha. Otherwise your explanation of Bhagavat or everything is like zero. So, <coughs> after this, he heard the question of all the rishis. What was the question? Punsam ekantata seya tanna sansatam arhasi ato sadho atra jatsaram samudhitta manisha bruhina sat dadhanam jena atma sampasita. Tell me the essence of all the epics, Vedu, Panishad, Bhagavata, and Srimad Bhagavata also. That by which following our Atma, our soul will be satisfied. satisfied. Will be happy. Also, something may, mo, more meaning. Jenatma samprasidati. Atma here. Atma of Atma is himself Krishna. If Krishna is satisfied and he is pleased, then everything is pleased. So, we should try to please Krishna, then our soul will be automatically so much happy. And if you are um, doing all things to please your self, Atma, your soul, oh, Krishna cannot be pleased. And you cannot be pleased. 
So best process to please Krishna by your all activities. And then you will see that, oh, myself, my Atma is also, others Atma are also so much happy. <laughs> now he is telling, Shabai punsang paro dharmo jato bhakti radhakkhaje How Sukhdev Goswami was a parrot and how he came to this world and told Srimad Bhagavatam. I have told so many times. So nothing to tell here. We are going to this subject. Shabai punsang paro dharmo jato bhakti radhakkhaje ahetuk kabyavahita ja bhakti pushoktane. Oh, certainly, certainly, that is high class of paro dharma, transcendental religion of all. What? To serve adhokkhaja, who is adhokkhaja, out of sense, who is Krishna himself. Brajandanandan Shyam Sundar. If you are doing causeless bhakti to him, and ceaseless, uh, causeless, and also without a stopping, uninterrupted, 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 hmm? flow like you are doing bhakti, not like that. Oh, in morning I do something, and after that I went to jaw, and I forget all this, and in evening when I return. Then I remember something. Om Bhur Bhuvaha. Like Plain Krishnaya Swaha. Like this. And then again you are taking prasadam and then Now Un in uninterrupted flow, like a stream, like Ganges river, all this one. Hmm? This is high class of hmm. dharma. Uh, dharma sunisita punsang vishwakshen kathasuja not padya vijatirya ting sama evahi kevanam. If you are also chanting, remembering, sometimes you are worshipping. Sometimes doing your treat sandhya, gathri three times. Hmm? But you have no taste in hearing pastimes of Krishna, hearing from Mahabhagavatam. Then your chanting may go away very quickly. If you are worshipping, your worship may go. You are serving your Gurudev and devotees, then it may go away very easily if your hearing is not strong. You will be very weak very soon, and then we will think that I should return to my home, I should marry, and then we will make money, and then a golden deity will be there, and we will serve all devotees, always reading Bhagavatam and giving him you will be weak, and then you will go forever. So, dharma svanishtitam viswakshenu katha sujah, those who have very strong faith in hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, taste some, try to create case stress. How it will come? Oh, comes hearing, hearing, hearing. If I have no test in chanting name, or oh, hearing, um, chanting, chanting, hearing some glories, glories, that it will come. But you will have to be in a high class of association. If that association is like that, you cannot develop your Krishna. And then we will be doing. Then we will think, what? Very big problem. Now Maharaj is here, like Swamiji was here in this World. And then we were very happy and we were very enthusiastic, hmm? doing this, that, always. Hmm? But when Swamiji went, then very big problem came. So much sannyasi went down 
Brahmachari left. Uh, I think that most of you are aware Brahmachari at the time of Swami. I know most of all, not married at all. And when Ma he went, oh, then you become weak and you made married and children and you made a gift, sansar of gift. <laughs> so now you can also uh, think this, that Maharaj is now here and we are very inspired and doing. After Maharaj, what will be? Then the same thing will come to us. Don't think like that. We are also like that. We are serving our Guru then, and he departed from this world. We are here, like him. <laughs> so try to be like this, always chanting, remembering of um, uh, strong belief like us. I'm not high class of person, but yet I have so much a strong faith and faith. Hearing Harikatha from Guru Parishad. So <coughs> never be, uh, have any problem for future, like animals. Never. Have faith, what Guru has given in our heart, not for problem. He has given everything, but now you will have to protect it and to sprout it, and to nourish it, nourish it then you will see everything realized. So no problem at all. Hmm? Then <coughs> he told that uh, the story of Narad. Without the help of transcendental group, high class of group, any man cannot develop all these things. If he had guru, but he cannot help, if he is not helping. He had not served internally to his guru there, and he is not inspired, and he is not enough, a strong, he has no faith, he cannot help his disciples. So he gave first Sukadeva Goswami the life history of Narada. At first Narada was the son of Brahma by mind, by... He came from the throat. Means in throat there is word, especially transcendental word. So Narada is the manifestation of word, what word? Brahma Shabda. Brahma. That why I explained yesterday. That Shabda Brahma. What is Shabda Brahma? Krishna himself. So he is told uh, Bhakta Avatar. Bhakti Avatar. The what? Devotion. After that, how he came? In a very low class of family. Very low class. His mother used to cook here and there. Not cooking, making, cleaning, cleaning here and there. At that time, <coughs> Narad was of five years old only. Five years. And at that time, Sanandan, Sanak, Sanandan, and all four. <coughs> With so many rishis, they came to in a village where he used to live with her mother. And with a very honor, he used to serve them. What serving? Oh, bring my lota, bring my dhoti, kamandalu. And you can come with me when I am going to bath in river. He used to do that. And luckily, <coughs> one day he took some remnant of that rishis which was in their leaflet and he took something. And as a result, what became? Vashna Padadhuli 
ভক্তপদ জল very dear and near to the sense of and how quickly his mother died who which was very attachment for him and he left all these things and very easily he entrons his heart so prem portion he realized and he advised that oh you should here and go on chanting remembering and telling my hari katha to all and a day will come when death will come and you will not die you will keep your faith on the head of that death and it went like that and he had the his own shiddha deha which is under or here he realizes his feet in that form and by that form he used to go everywhere in this world coming sometimes in golok bindavan sometimes with narayan and shiva so without guru <coughs> we cannot go up. and that guru should be not like kalijugi guru <laughs> kalijugi guru cannot be only he thinks properly but we are property of krishna so guru should give we and to in the lord's feet of krishna and then he is good so these instructions are like this we know in shrimad bhagavat he told or bhakti should be not like dhruva there was some defect what was the essence of the story of dhruva to whom i told to you ha huh. you should come and tell in very brief <coughs> i will go quickly i am going i am coming to touch tent canto because i have told all these things so essence are only given kaha kya hua So in Shrimad Bhagavatam fourth canto we hear the past time of Dhruva Maharaj the great sage Maitri Muni is describing the past time to the great devotee Vidura he explains that there was a king named Uttanpad and he had two wives named <laughs> Suniti and Surichi they both have different nature altogether suruchi is a very materialistic woman always enjoying and enjoying sense gratification she also has one son who is named uttam and the other wife of the king is suniti who is of a devotee nature and very simple lady and her son is dhruva maharaj once the king uttanpad he was sitting on his throne 
and Suruchi was standing close by and her son Uttam, he was sitting in the lap of King Uttanpath and King was patting with love and affection on his head and also uh, smelling his head. Dhruv, who was also nearby, young child, about five years of age, he looked and he also became eager to come and sit in the lap of the king, who is his father. So, when he attempted to climb in the lap of his father, Suruchi, who was standing nearby, she became envious and she checked him to climb in the lap of his father and she said, Oh dear child, your attempt to sit in the lap of your father will not be fulfilled because you have not taken birth from my womb, although you are son of the king. If you want to sit down in the lap of your father or if you want to sit on this throne, then you must go and worship Narayan. Please him, take boon from him and by his benediction you should take birth from my womb. Then only your desire can be fulfilled, not otherwise. Dhruva Maharaj was standing and he noticed his father did not protest it at all. He was silent. The harsh words of Surichi, his stepmother, pursed the heart of this young boy. He has Kshatriya blood because his son of the Uttanpath, who is Kshatriya. So he became so angry, he started crying and his lips started trembling in anger and he quickly left the palace and he went to his mother. Meanwhile, other residents of the palace has described the incident in detail to his mother. And when Suniti heard such a bad behavior of his co-wife, uh, stepmother of Dhruv, <coughs> then she became so aggrieved to hear. Her heart became so painful and she also started crying. She immediately took Dhruv in her lap and started pacifying him. And she said, O oh, Dhruv, listen my dear child, you should not, you should never wish anything inauspicious or bad for others. Those who cause suffering to others, they themselves get reaction of those actions. I know only the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudev, He can help you. He can fulfill your desire. And in the past also, your father, great-grandfather has done like that. They have pleased the Supreme Personality of Godhead and they have acquired. All their desires have been fulfilled. So you should try to please him. Hearing these words from his mother, the boy had strong faith to go and worship Narayan. And after <coughs> keeping himself together, coming out of that state of mind, he fixed his intelligence and with resolute determination he left the palace, left the, ho the house of his father and went out in the forest. And when he went in the forest, Narad Muni, he came to know about this wonderful attempt of this young boy who has come in such a young age to know, to achieve, to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So he approached this nice, gentle, tender baby boy and he kept his hand on his head and said, Oh boy, see how wonderful these Kshatriyas. Why? Because he's so young, but he cannot tolerate a little bit of insult. And who did that? His stepmother. No one outside person. So the elders can say like this to the child, Why you are so disturbed? You should not be so much disturbed. And in this age, it's like a sport or playing, you should forget it immediately. And even if you feel insulted, then you should understand that this is part of life. Everything happens by the laws of karma, the will of the providence. Sometimes you feel happiness, satisfaction, and sometimes you're suffering and you're not comfortable. So, you should go back. You should play. This is not the age for you to perform austerities because you don't know how severe austerities have to be performed if one has to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the past, for billions and billions of years, many yogis have tried and they have failed. You will not be able to do so. But Dhruva Maharaj was least affected by the words of Narad Muni. Humbly and 
with a very sweet voice, he replied to Narad Muni. He said, O oh great sage, you have given very wonderful instructions to me, but I must tell you that my heart is completely broken by the words of my stepmother. I must get a more important position, more exalted position than my father. And so exalted that no one else should have that in this world. So you please tell me, how can I fulfill this desire? You're so merciful. So when Narad Rishi, he saw the determination of this young boy, he told him the process, that how he can please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He gave him the 12 syllable mantra. He told him, you should go in the forest of Madhuban. You should take, dip in the Yamuna River three times. And after properly cleaning and sitting in Ashtanga Yogasan, you should meditate on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He also told him the form of the Lord. He also told him the qualities of the Lord and told him all the process. So, Dhruva Maharaj, after taking all the instructions of his, from his Gurudev, he circumambulated him and paying obeisances, he left to the forest of Madhuban. And there, exactly as his Gurudev has told, he followed the process. And he became very attached with the mantras. And gradually, gradually, he lost interest in all his external activities. He gradually reduced his eating, so much so that he, in the last month, was not even taking air. He was not breathing. And the situation in the entire planet became so disturbed that everyone, even the demigods, were feeling suffocated. They could not breathe. So all of them, they approached the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Narayan, and requested Him, O oh Lord, You are our Savior. We are all feeling this disturbance. You please rescue us from this troublesome situation. And immediately, Lord Narayan, He said, You should be pacified. I will quickly go and pacify this boy. Because his severe austerities has created this havoc. So immediately, Lord Narayan, he came to this young boy who was sitting in his meditation and he was meditating on the beautiful form of the Lord holding conch shell and club and all the four uh, items. When Lord appeared in front of him, the form which he was meditating inside was disappeared. So his meditation broke, he became restless. Where is that beautiful form I was meditating on? And his eyes opened and as he opened his eyes, he saw that very form of the Lord was present in his, in his front. Now, young boy, what he can do? He immediately falls flat at the feet of Sri Narayan. And he could not understand what he should do. But seeing the position of the tender child, Lord Narayan, he touched his conch shell with his head. And as soon as the conch shell was touched with his head, all the Vedas and all the realizations and all the essence of all the Absolute Truth manifested in his heart. And immediately he stood up and with folded hands he started glorifying the Lord with so many wonderful prayers. But with this knowledge he also realized what? That material sense gratification is useless. One can never never be happy in this world. No matter, they can try whatever they can. What to speak of in this world? They can go to even higher planets like Lord Brahma. Still, they will not be satisfied. Only pure devotional service, unconditional, uninterrupted, as we heard just now, can please the Lord. And only by pleasing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one can be really peaceful. So now, he was crying, that why I desired for all that material opulence. But Lord said, since you have desired it, so I must bestow this benediction. But you should not worry. You will not be entangled, and by my mercy, at the end of this, uh, going through 36,000 years of empire and uh, enjoying all this material sense gratification, you will come back to me. But here, the teaching which we get from this wonderful pastime is that Dhruva Maharaj, he performed very severe austerities, and he was worshipping the Lord. His devotion was uninterrupted. Continuously he was performing and he was able to take the darshans of the Lord. But what happened? He was desiring for a broken piece of glass. He made all that effort to achieve a broken piece of glass. But when he found a diamond, he could not get it because his purpose was not motivated properly. He had darshans of Sadhguru like Narad, 
who can be more pure than Narad? But yet, when Sri Narad Muni, he, did, he noticed, he detected that this boy had a very strong Anya Bilash, desire to have so much opulence in this world, Narad Muni understood that even if I tell him, he will not understand. So he must go through this. So he told him that, okay, even if you want these things, you should go and worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But his bhakti is called Sakam Bhakti. He did all those devotional activities, but for his own desires. He didn't perform all those austerities for the satisfaction of the Lord. He performed all those things for his satisfaction. So, the main teaching is that even if we are performing all the external limbs of the bhakti as we hear, but they should be properly motivated with only desire to please Krishna. There should not be no other desire. If there is any other desire, then we will not be benefited. And another point, what? That he came to his Gurudev and he spoke very honestly. He told him that I have come to you for this purpose. He did not cheat it. He did not lie. But if we are in the association of Sadhguru and we may take the dress of a devotee, but we do not open our heart and tell our all problems to Sadhguru, then how he will help us? So, if we become honest and sincere in our approach, then by the mercy of Sadhguru, surely our all anarthas will go away and we can achieve our supreme goal, which is Anya Abhilashita Shunyam Gyan Karmat Denavardam Anukulyan Krishna Anushilaram Bhakti Ruttama. A high class of devotee like Narada, he initiated Dhruva. He has also initiated Prahlad Maharaj, you know. He also initiated Chitraketu Maharaj. But these three were in different category. If Guru wants to give the same thing, Golok Vrindavan, the surface of Krishna. But if there is no past impressions, then he cannot give. He wants to give, but they cannot take. So, Dhruv Maharaj has no past impressions. He can have, take no air, no water, for six months, very hard authority. But not the, he has no impression of high class of devotees before. So Narad Maharaj could not give. The Swamiji, Srila Prabhupada, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he wanted to give all these things. And that is why Bhakti Minod Thakur started Nagar Sankirtan, you know? Namhatta, Nam that we are following somehow. Swamiji began, started from me. But he could not get them. High class of devotion to Radha and Krishna, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Black Krishna Das. Kala Krishna Das, he was with him in South India, but he did not. So it requires some impression of this birth and also. But if you will neglect to be the initiation of high class of Vaishnava and realizing all these things, even Gurudev will once and he can do anything, but he will not break the process. He will not give this thing. That is why he could not give to Dhruva. And he is still in Dhruva Lok, not in Goloka Vrindavan or his. You know the history of Devuti and Kapil Dev. Oh, very essence of that teaching you should give in very few minutes. I want to 
finish all these things. Tenth, ninth canto. You can be here, no harm. Eh? Yeah. 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 In interesting, very simple. Mama Gyanam Timiran Dasi Gyanam Janasalakaya Chaksuram Nalikam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama. So the sages of Naimasharanya, headed by Shonaka, asked their guru, Suti Goswami, to tell them about the birth of Kapiladev, the personality of Godhead, who appeared. Who, although the personality of Godhead and without any material form assumes so many forms by his internal potency who is his supreme will. So Sutta Goswami related the story of how Kailamamuni was the son of Lord Brahma and he was ordered to create progeny around the universe. So in order to fulfill this order he did austerities for many, many thousands of years, maybe fifty or sixty thousands of years. Then Lord Vishnu appeared to him, riding on Garuda, very beautiful, bluish with four arms, and he asked Lord Vishnu for the boon to have a wife of equal disposition to himself. So Lord Vishnu told him, because you did bhakti to me, you'll get more than your expectation. Not only will I give you such a good wife who will be of equal disposition to yourself, but she'll be the daughter of the emperor of the whole universe and she'll have so many good qualities and I also will come as your son. So uh, it came about that Kardama Muni married Devahuti and uh, soon after their marriage she was serving him and although she was a princess and the daughter of the emperor of the entire universe, she was engaged in great austerities, not at all caring about her bodily comforts, washing her hair maybe once a, once a year, and becoming very lean and thin, not caring about her food, only serving her husband in his devotional service. So then she asked him for a boon. She said, I'm serving you so much, so I want to ask you for a benediction. I want children. So first they had nine daughters, by Kodama Muni, who was such a great yogi, powerful yogi, that simply by his will, he was able to create a palatial city which flew in the sky, made of diamonds and rubies and uh, ivory, and all the bedspreads were made just uh, white like the foam of milk. Everything was gorgeous, enviable by the denizens of heaven even. So then, in that palace, they had nine daughters, who were later married to the nine great sages, the sons of Brahma, and they also propagated the universe. Then um, uh, Kardama Muni uh, wanted to leave because he had given children, but Devahuti begged for one son. So Kardama Muni gave her uh, the greatest of all sons, the personality of Godhead, Lord Kapiladev. And then he left and uh, he glorified Kapiladev. He met him just before he left and glorified Kapiladev. Then Kapiladev went back to the palace of Devahuti and Devahuti requested her son that I'm very much distressed. My mind and senses are so distressed by material nature. Only you can purify me and get me out of ignorance. So I'm a woman, I'm less intelligent I can understand very, very exalted things by myself, but if you explain it in a very nice way, then I can understand. So Kapiladev explained how there's two types of souls, the conditioned soul and the liberated soul. And the conditioned soul, although transcendental, he thinks himself a product of matter and becomes involved in lust, anger, greed, and so many inauspicious activities which sends him to different uh, hellish results. But if such a soul becomes pure by Sadhu Sangha, then he realizes his own transcendental nature and he realizes that he's self effulgent, although minute, and he becomes indifferent to all material things. 
Then Kapila Dev began explaining what are the qualities of the sadhu. Tatikshava Karunika. He's very to uh, tolerant and he's very merciful. And he's uh, equal to all living beings. He's the friend of all living beings. Surudam Sarvadehinam. And he has no enemies. Somebody may be his enemy, but he's not anybody's enemy. Just like Maharaj Yudhisthira is called Ajata Satru. So the sadhu is called Ajata Satruva Shanta. Even if somebody's his enemy, like Duryodhana and company were the enemies of uh, Maharaj Yudhisthira, but even so, Maharaj Yudhisthira considered them as great friends. So the sadhu is Ajatras, Ajatas uh, Satrava Shanta, and he's always peaceful. He's never disturbed by anything material. And uh, these are his, he's ornamented by these wonderful qualities, Sarva, Sarubhushana. So from this type of sadhu, one should hear about Krishna. Then there's a verse given by Kapiladev, which Srila Gurudev quotes so very often. If you know, want to know where it is, because it's one of the main verses that he quotes, it's Srimad Bhagavatam 3, 25, 25. Very easy to remember. And this verse is, Satam Prasangam Mamavir Yasambito. What? Bhavanti Ritkana Rasayana Kata. Tadjo Shanat Asva Pavarga Vartmani. Shradharatir Bhakti Anukramishati. So, Satam. Satam means pure devotees. In the association of pure devotees, or from pure devotees, Mama Virya Sambido. Mama means my, and Virya means my heroic activities, my heroic pastimes, particularly the pastimes in Vrindavan. Sambido, one who hears such discussions. Bhavanti Hritkarna Rasayana Kata. This uh, hearing acts like Rasayana. Rasayana is similar to the word that Gurudev used, Maha Osadi, or a very great medicine. If somebody's suffering and he takes a tonic of ras and he feels so much happiness in transcendental association with Krishna in any loving relationship, this is Rasayan. When a pure devotee speaks Harikata, as Gurudev just mentioned, Krishna himself enters into the ears and through the ears he enters into the heart and washes away all bad things. Then Tad Joshanat Asupavarga Vartmani. He goes very fast on the path of liberation and Shraddha Ratir Bhakti Anukramishati. Then step by step, by hearing from such pure devotees, he achieves Shraddha, strong faith in Krishna, Sadhana Bhakti, then Rati or Bhava Bhakti, and then Bhakti meaning Prema Bhakti and ultimately Braj Bhakti. So then Kapila Dev goes on to describe a devotional service that such a sadhu, and everyone should be a sadhu, he's saying, because uh, Devahuti is asking, please tell me what kind of devotional service I should do so that I can get purified and reach perfection. So Kapila Dev said, do the kind of devotional service that sadhus do. That is, they're so absorbed in bhakti that that bhakti dissolves their false ego, just like, this is very interesting, just like the fire in a stomach digests everything. So bhakti, performed by anyone, dissolves the subtle body, the false ego and the mind. So one should engage in devotional service with his mind and senses, renouncing his family. That doesn't mean necessarily externally, but internally, serving the family, as Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakwa writes in his Sharanagati songs, that I take care of my family because they're Krishna's and they're engaged in Krishna's service. So renouncing attachment to the family, renouncing attachment to the body, renouncing attachment to the false ego, and engaging the mind and senses without personal motive in the Lord's service. Then the Lord began to explain so many uh, complex and deep subject matters. He said, I will tell you that knowledge which cuts all ignorance, and that knowledge is the knowledge of my qualities. Then he explains, 
Krishna's spiritual qualities, his spiritual form. He said, and that he says that anyone who is meditating on my smiling face, he becomes free from all material t attachments. He becomes indifferent, and no problems can disturb him. As Gurudev often tells the story of Jad Bharat, whose head was on the chopping block, and his head in a few minutes was going to be thrown into the fire by the dacoits, he was thinking, oh, I have such bad karma. So if I give up this body, which is the result of that bad karma, then I'll get a good body next time as a devotee. So he wasn't the slightest bit disturbed. So then Kapila Dev began talking about the creation, how that Lord uh, creates the five senses, the five material elements, the five, uh, five gross elements, five subtle elements, ten senses, and ultimately the twenty-fifth element being time. And by the agitation of time, the whole creation comes from subtle elements to gross elements, starting from false ego. Then there's false ego in the mode of goodness, passion, and ignorance. Then Kapila Dev explains the qualities of goodness, passion, and ignorance, of the mind, of the intelligence. So many subject matters. So I'll end here. <laughs> Everywhere we are seeing the necessity of high class of association. Also, Kapil Dev told to his mother, Satang Prasanga Mamma Vilsya Sampito. So, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Kaya, Lo Matre, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shikhiya. Uh, even a moment, if he is in solution, that it will not go in vain. But it would be with honor and great, uh, very strong belief. Otherwise, no action. No action. So, with honor, we should do, follow all these things. Gracefully, he can. He should not be upset, otherwise he cannot be benefited. You know Bharat, Bharat was a very high class of Vaishnava, and he was going to attain Rati, even Nishta Bhakti he has crossed. Test in name, Harikatha, everything was there. So renounced he became. And then he came in Ashakti stays. And he left his home, children, wife, everything. And he was now renounced and came in a very dense forest. And he was then home. And he was chanting, remembering. But what happened? He was attached with a deer who was drowning in the river. He has left his children and wives and everything. There was no attachment. He has reached to Rati, even. So you should also be very careful for this. If you are coming to this state, from there, there is a chance to go down. If you have not test and chanting remembering, there is so much chance because you are full of unearths. So we should always be in association, association, high class. If Narada was there and he was with association, Bhat Maharaj there, that I think that this Hmm. What? Would, not would that had not be happened. Hmm. He would not have gone for three lives down, never. But there was no one he, there. Hmm. So try to be always, even at the stage of Nishta, Ruchi, also with high class of uh, devotees, association. Hmm. If there was some association, he could not have fallen down. 
and then this is he has some pity mercy for that baby deer and this is called satvika mercy this mercy this should be in devotees but they should not be attached with that he should have done but he was attached and his attachment for krishna went down and then he quickly he was, he came to death and only remembering what he became he became dear and he was very careful in second but and also in third and you know all these histories so what is the essence of this story that sukhdev goswami tell to parikshit maharaj when he was going to die you have come giving up your son all kinds of attachment i am telling hari katha to you you should not be like bharat you should not attach you should not give a moment for other attachment so you should be like that there are two things first is what that if bharat in his last days at the time of death he remembered dear and he became dear so if anyone having so many dogs and they have so much attachment to his dog that it is certainly that he will be dog in next year anyone cannot check stop if he has any attachment to worldly anything then he may come like serpents tigers and bears like horses like anything even he can be like a, a very beautiful lady though he was a male form and he and he will be very lusty it may be that if any lady is remembering any person then he may be like that very lusty it may be he may be like donkey because he donkeys are so lusty so he may be become like lusty like monkeys and lord all these things so don't do like this from beginning you should try to always chant and remember krishna but not only krishna if you are doing like that that you can emerge in krishna and you can be like mayavadis with devotees you should remember from beginning if gurudev has given some idea to you you should try to follow sometimes guru wants to give some any so much things he gives also but no association so he could not he he did not guru dev gives him everything in gopal mantra in kama gatri he gives everything is there but he is not qualified to know no but if he is always in association of high class of vaishnav oh he will realize all these things so they can realize you make you realize that in gopal mantra it was given by krishna himself to brahma kamagatri was also given and by this help oh they went to golokvindavan they can go easy nothing to take anything more so good they gives everything but will have to realize in association of high class of vaishnav so we should uh, remember more than krishna to jashoda or gopis like rupmanjari and others then we can serve krishna in that way there are so many things to tell about this we should follow rup goswami that is why we are called rupanuga oh i know that all gets a jadhani 
Rupanu Guru Barga Kija. But he never knows that what is Rupanuga. We should try to know with a question that what is Rupanuga? What is a Raga Nuga? What is a Raga? What is Shatha? What is Nishtha? What is taste? What is Asati? What is Arati? What is brain? What is name, man, prane, rag, and rag? Then you will know all these things. The high class of association gives all these things. By reading Srimad Bhagavatam, you cannot do it. And anything. So, Satang Prasangam of meditation. Also, we can learn so many things from Bharat Charitra. Bharat was so renounced in third birth. He became Brahmin. He became totally like mad. He was not mad. Always remembering Krishna and other things. And he never associated with worldly passions. Never. But it is doubt that whether he has received the thing, same thing what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. Anarpit Charing Chirat Karunayavati. You never attend. You are so lucky. More than all, Bharat Maharaj and all others, you are so lucky to have come to this, uh, in this time, uh, just after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You are so lucky. We are so lucky. But we are so unfortunate that we don't want to follow all this. Don't want to take... We want to take gold. We want to okay, take some worldly reputations from Vaishnavas, some other things, but not this high class of things, love and affection of Krishna. I think Bharat Maharaj never attended this. He had received so much high class of knowledge. But had he received this, a, a drop of love of Radha and Krishna conjugal, he had never heard of this. Never, he had no chance. Chitra Ketu Maharaj, high class of Vaishnava. Prahlad Maharaj, so high class of everything, everywhere he used to see Krishna here and there. But has he any anugatya of gopis? Have he any uh, what taste or greed for gopis? Oh, never. Because he had no association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers. But he was so much fortunate. Don't huh? neglect and don't misuse this time, otherwise you will be self-cutter, butcher like. Don't be butcher. Try to utilize. Today time is over. I wanted to tell some. Rama, you're saying that it's very important to hear about Yes. Never. You can cannot hear the essence. What I'm telling now, I'm third class bogus person. Even I'm telling so many things. And when more elevated person, Rashik and Vaishnava will come and tell, and then how glorious it will be. You cannot understand. But we are so fortunate that we have come just after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we are so fortunate. If we are unable to have such association, then at that time reading will do something? <laughs> huh? You can be like Mayabadi, Karmi. No, we are breath with such association for time being, and huh? then what should we do? In the absence of this association, it will help. It will give something. If you are sincere and praying to Krishna, Krishna is so merciful, He will at once marry all these things. You, you pray to Nityananda Prabhu, He is more merciful than anyone. Oh, please manage this. Give me so high class of association that I can hear Chaitanya Chaitamrita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh, be merciful. 
I depend on you. I am giving up my whole heart to you. And you will surely manage. You have uh, such a high class of strong belief on Nitya. Uh, Hare Krishna. And then we come out. But on the other hand, in Brazil, when somebody asked you, what do you mean by association? You said it doesn't necessarily mean physical, but it can mean by heart. So how do you address the two? Because then you have to read when you're trying to do it. Come on, come on. <laughs> if it is available, hmm? uh, physically, then why you should bother for this? <laughs> we should try to. They want to know what to do on June 10th when you go away. Hello. Crime. Oh, Krishna will manage everything. Short end. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. The drama tonight is the story of Shivananda Sain and his dog. And there's a brief, uh, at the end of the little play, it's a very short little play, there's a Srila Prabhupada's commentary from the Chaitanya Charitamrita explaining. And the second play is the conversion of Prakashananda Saraswati and the Mayavadis by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we'll begin our first drama. Uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, when Chaitanya, Mah Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returned to Jagannath Puri after visiting Vrindavan. At that time, Sarup Damodar sent news of the Lord's arrival to the devotees in Bengal. Upon hearing the news, all the Navadvip devotees departed to Jagannath Puri to see the Lord. They assembled under the care of the great devotee Shivananda Sain, who arranged for the journey, maintained everyone, and arrange for everyone's residential quarters. This is one pastime from that journey. We have a long journey ahead. See that all devotees are nicely cared for. Hi, hi. What is this? Hi, hi. Hi, hi. This is the food. This dog has been recently fun. I tried to send it away, but it keeps coming back. Actually, let it accompany us and follow behind us. Moreover, See that daily it is given ample food and maintains nicely. One day, the party needed to cross a river, and there an Arisen boatman objected. Sain had to leave the party for some time to deal with a toll man now who had wanted a fee from Shivananda Sain. Do you, by any chance, 
Cats have a brother who's a boatman? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to pay the price, then you can come. Go get your friends and you come. Come and pass. Uh, I guess we have no choice, do we? For you. For you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, for you, I make no profit. Come on, come on. <laughs> it was evening when Shivananda Sain returned back and was taking Prasad. At that point, his servant came to see him. Everyone has taken Prasad? The dog as well, I presume? Well, actually, while you were with the toll man, I forgot to give it its cooked rice. You what? And he disappeared. So a search party went out, and after several hours, they returned. Oh, I am most unhappy. Tonight I will fast, and tomorrow morning you will send out another search party. Yes, All the devotees were astonished to see Shivananda's concern for a dog. The next morning a search party went out, but without success. Thus in great anxiety they all completed the walk to Jagannath Puri, where Lord Chaitanya met them as usual. He took them to see Lord Jagannath, fed them, and provided them with residential quarters, and told them to come and see him again the next morning. The next day no one saw the dog. That dog received a spiritual body and went back to Godhead. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita purport, Srila Prabhupada says the following words. Shivananda Sain's attachment to the dog was a great boon for that animal. Thus the dog got the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and was immediately promoted to become an eternal devotee. There is no harm in taking birth again and again. Our only desire should be to take birth under the care of a Vaishnava. Fortunately, as Srila Prabhupada is saying, we had the opportunity with the to be born of a Vaishnava father who took care of us very nicely. He prayed to Srimati Radharani that in the future we would become a servant of the eternal consort of Sri Krishna. Thus, somehow or other, we are now engaged in that service. We may conclude that even as dogs, we must take shelter of a Vaishnava. The benefit will be the same as that which comes to an advanced devotee under a Vaishnava's care. Gold Freeman and Thank you. Our next play, our next play is called The Liberation of uh, the Mayavadis, Prakashananda Saraswati, etc. The external reason for Lord Chaitanya's appearance in this world was to propagate the Sankirtan movement and deliver all the fallen souls. <laughs> He devised various methods to liberate them from Maya. Only the impersonalist Mayavadis avoided his mercy. When Lord Chaitanya was passing through a place called Varanasi, on his way to Vrindavan, the Mayavadi sannyasis blasphemed against him in many ways. They opposed the process of chanting and dancing in service to Krishna. They preferred the process of studying Vedanta. They denied that God was a person. Not only did they deny that God is a person, but it took them quite a while to assemble in the place where they were meeting. <laughs> but as fate would have it, soon they assembled. I am you, and you are me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Two devotees of Mahaprabhu, Chandrasekhar and Tapana Mishra, couldn't bear to heed the blasphemy. They approached Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a very unhappy state. While this was going on, the all-powerful Lord smiled slightly and remained silent. By his divine plan, a local Brahmin suddenly appeared on the scene and approached the Lord. Such is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Simultaneously, he was arranging to relieve the suffering of his devotees and to deliver the Mayavadi sannyasis as well. The next day, Lord Chaitanya went to the house of the Brahmin. There, he saw all the sannyasis already seated. When he came in, he offered obeisances. Showing humility, he then sat at the place where the shoes were kept. Please come here, Your Holiness. Why do you sit in this unclean place? My dear sir, I belong to a lower order of sannas. I do not deserve to sit with you. I understand your call to Krishna Chaitanya. You are a disciple of Shikeshwar Bhattu, and therefore you are glorious. Why do you avoid associating with us? And why do you, a sannyasi, indulge in chanting and dancing in Sankirtan with fanatics instead of studying Vedanta in formal meditation? You walk as a folder as the lion himself. Please explain to us your behavior. My dear sir, let me hear my reason. My spiritual master considered me a fool. Thus he challenged me. He said I was not qualified to study Vedanta. Thus he told me to always chant the holy name of Krishna, which is the essence of all Vedic knowledge. Simply by chanting the holy name, he said, I would see the lotus feet of Krishna. He said, in this age of Kali, there is no alternative for spiritual progress than to chant the holy name of Krishna. So I always chant, and while chanting, I lose myself and laugh and cry like a madman. My good. It was the nature. My Gurudev said it was the nature of the Hare Krishna mantra that anyone who chants it develops his ecstatic love for Krishna. 
And then? And then some, one sometimes laughs and cries and runs here and there like a madman. This is real indeed. <laughs> 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 My spiritual master was achieved, ha happy that I had achieved the supreme goal of life and ordered me to continue chanting and dancing in association with the devotees and to preach the value of chanting so that all fallen souls would be delivered. I firmly believe in the words of my spiritual master, and that is why I always perform sankirtan and am drinking from the ocean of spiritual bliss. Maturity of my meditation, I realize <laughs> the Mayavadi sannyasis were deeply moved by the words of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They heard his explanation on the true conclusion of Vedanta. He thus proved himself to be a greater Vedantist than themselves and exposed the offensive nature of Mayavadi philosophy. They spoke to him in great humility. My dear sir, you have made it knowledge personified and the lion himself. Kindly excuse us for the offenses we previously committed by criticizing you. Yes, I will ex excuse you for all your offenses and bless you that you will always chant the holy name. From that moment, when the Mayavadis heard the true conclusion of Vedanta Sutra from the Lord, their minds changed. On the instruction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they also chanted, always, Krishna, Krishna, with great love. Boy, there wasn't easy being, God. Much more better being a servant. Hare Oh, he told me that is our police you cannot read Vedanta Shastra. So don't go in Vedanta. Hmm? I am giving you this mantra. What? Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, my police. Hello, Nasteva, Nasteva, Nasteva. This would give up all the methods what he has given before. And only we should chant and remember and have a strong faith on me. And also something, Namah Arswaha has been given and added in, in this name. That is called? So two things Guru Dev gives. He told that you should chant always Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Our relation with Krishna and to fortify our hearts. <coughs> what he gives? Oh, Gopal Mantra, Guru Mantra, Gaur Gayatri, and all other things. <laughs> the Mantra gives a very thick relation with Krishna that Krishna is my beloved. <laughs> so don't think that uh, we should not follow Guru Mantra. Also, Guru Mantra. Oh. So, Ishwar Puri Pad gave him what? Clean Swaha, Gopal Mantra. And he told that you should all be chant Maha Mantra. And what is there? Everything will come. Krishna, the ocean of Rapsha, will come. 
and you will have Braj Primas. So when I began to chant and to remember my mantra, I saw that a very black spot, tricky boy, <laughs> he used to come in my meditation. And he wanted to play with me and I used to become mad after him. Sometimes I used to run to touch and to play with them, but I could not touch him. Oh, by tricky way he used to go here and there, and then I be used to roll down on the earth and weeping, weeping for hours and hours. That is why I mean. And sometimes if he meets and plays and make jokes with me and plays on floors, then I become happy and I uh, laugh like madness. So always like this I become. Then they realize this fact and then they admitted Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like their guru, they left all Mayabad philosophy. philosophy and they took shelter in the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then Maya Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, repeat me, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So be like this, follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very easily. Nothing to go to Vedanta that, oh, Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead and this and that. So we should try to follow the principles, essence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In Kaliju, Malli name Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, 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 Krishna Take prasadam, oh, full to this, Doha, <laughs> Mahaprasadam, very delicious prasadam, offer to Krishna and take it and always chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Oh, these two boys played very good, huh? Mahaprabhu and Sivananda Sen and, oh, very good, very good. Hum Sarup Damodar. Huh? Rup, um, uh, like no, Raghunath Das Kursan. Huh? Oh. Uh, no. Yeah. Go.